Hey everyone, Kirk here with Kirk's Motor Rad Shop in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Today I'm going to show you how to bypass the ABS unit on your K1200 LT. This is only something you'd want to do if there is a terminal problem with your ABS pump and you really don't want to go through the wait period that it would take or the expense that it would take to have it repaired. In cooperation with Spiegler Brake Lines, I developed a brake line kit that you can change your braking system over and there's a lot of process besides just changing out some brake lines there's actually quite a bit of process to go through in order to get the flashing light off of your dash uh, to stop the clicking you, you want to make sure that your brake lights still work and your speedometer still works because all that stuff is tied in to the electronics that are hooked up to the ABS pump I have three different kits available. I have ones that I've got two kits available for the motorcycles, the LTs that do not have Spiegler brake lines already. And then I have a kit available that if you already have Spiegler brake lines uh, installed on your motorcycle, this will then cover those. If you have any questions, uh, reach out to me on my website at kirksmotorrod.com. I, I will make them available but you need to contact me and we need to discuss what exactly you need and then I'll send you pricing and everything. Uh, I am the exclusive distributor for these kits so if you call up Spiegler Brake Lines and ask them for one of the kits they're gonna just send you right back to me and you, you'll have to get them through me. So we'll get started on this right away. So as you can see I've got this motorcycle pretty much naked here, okay? And I'm, I'm ready to do this process. You really need to get the bike to this point in, before you get this started. If you need to know how to do any of that work, please see some of my other videos on how to remove the Tupperware, how to remove the gas tank. You need to take all that stuff off because you need to be able to access this right here, the relay box. You need to put, there's a relay in there that you have to pull. Uh, to stop the light in the dash from from clicking and flickering as of right now what what's going on is when you turn the key on it goes through its normal check and you you know you can hit this the, the front brake and it works still if you touch the rear brake the pump turns on and it just never shuts off so that and and then the you get a rapid uh, one hertz flash in the dash saying that there's a brake problem I put it on the computer and it is defective so Let's get going on this right now. First thing I'm going to do here, I'll bring you in for a little closer look, but the first thing I'm going to do is empty out the reservoir at the top here. And uh, I have to change this brake line on this model. Now this particular bike is going to need all four lines. So if your bike has the Spiegler line already, there's obviously there's going to be parts of the video that you can skip ahead and pass up so you're not going to have to worry about installing up the uh, the front caliper brake lines uh, that that's going to be something you'll be able to skip but on this particular one we're going right from zero which means that the OE lines have to be replaced darn it let's get to it pop this cap off of here you want to make sure to, to uh, cover up your windshield and your paintwork drape something on there use an old towel or in this case I have a fender cover that I like to use but you want to make sure to protect this because if any of this brake fluid gets on your windshield it instantly makes a mark on there and you will not get that mark out no matter what you do there's no saving it to this date and there's no wood to knock on I have never had one of these get on the windshield but I definitely have had the stuff on this on this fender cover here quite a few times okay I'll vacuum that out of there okay put a rag up in the top of this thing and then you'll be able to take care of the rest and you can move this around without the worry of it uh, spilling out anywhere next I'm going to take off 
this cover right here I've re already removed the top cover on the handlebar so I can get to the brake line now I need to be able to rotate this backwards and when I remove this brake line this is going to be the same even if you have the Spiegler you're still going to have to remove this part and uh, change out the brake line from here because we're going to make one continuous brake line that goes from the handle here down to the three-way manifold that is on the Spiegler kit. So there's a screw that's right in behind right here. Use like a number one screwdriver, uh, number one uh, Phillips. There's a, there's a screw right here. You'll see it, there's only one there. And then there's one up underneath right here and it's a silver should be a little silver screw underneath there. There it is. Now you can pull this away and rotate it just like that. And all you, all you want to do is, is expose the little hex head that is right here. We're going to loosen that up and then we'll be able to turn this whole mechanism. There's a little, uh, kind of a little little holder here for the brake line sometimes they're kind of tight you know you can't get the brake line out uh, just just kind of pry it backwards if you need to might not need to sometimes they just pop right out of there okay before I rotate this I need to make room to rotate it so I need to disconnect down below here which I'll take you down there and we need to disconnect the brake line now over here at the front you got this air tube it's in the way so you can either just remove one, the one bolt that holds it on here and just kind of pry the thing off, or you can remove the whole tube. It's just held in by a screw there or a, a bolt, a bolt back here. And then there's one that's right on top of the air box. I'm going to move, remove the whole thing for the sake of this video. But what you do is up to you here. It doesn't really make too much difference. One thing that I do that really helps out a lot on this to, to remove this is I drill a hole right here in line with the bolt you'll look underneath there you'll be able to see your bolt and if you just take a little step drill or a regular drill just put a hole right there that's something that BMW probably should have done when they designed this bike but it, it gets covered up by the the fairing so you, you never see it anyway it just makes it a lot easier to get to this bolt Now I've got really clear access to the, uh, the the fittings that are up top here. So we're going to take a 14 millimeter wrench and open this one up. Uh, have a rag standing by because it is going to you're, you are going to catch some brake fluid here that's going to want to drain down from the top from that reservoir. Just go ahead and remove that all the way. Now at this point, if you wanted to remove this one as well, you can. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. I'm going to just go take you back up top and show you the rest of the procedure there. Once you got this loose, it's, it's ready to come out on this end. Back up at the top here, you've got this 4 millimeter little holding screw. Just back that off a little bit. You don't have to remove it and then you're able to rotate this this is where the the hose will get stuck I can't see what's going on here's where the hose will get stuck right up in here and that's that's that uh, thing I was talking about earlier the little kind of like a hose holder just kind of pop it out of there make a note make a little mental note of how the brake line routes with the throttle cables so in this case it goes over the top of the throttle cables this is a late model bike that has the updated throttle cable so I'm not going to really get it too uh, messed up here but just make a mental note of it yours might look a little different than this one so that's why I say make a note 
You usually have a zip tie up toward the front that you need to clip out of the way. Now we can rotate that thing up. Now right here, this is where you remove it. You're either going to have a 14 millimeter banjo bolt or you're going to have a hex headed banjo bolt that has a 6 millimeter head on it. In this case, it is the 14. So, I'm going to loosen that up. And when you open that up, it's going to now drain into your the rag that's down below. I'm just going to remove this brake line altogether. Save your banjo bolt. But remove the little washers that are on it. It's got these little copper washers. Take those off. You're going to discard those. And then just pull the, the brake line out of the bike. There we go. And throw it away. Now when you go into your kit, you're either going to have two brake lines or you're going to have four. They may or may not be marked. And if they're not marked, don't worry about it. They really can only go in one place. You're going to see a brake line that's got a couple of rubber grommets on it. That's your back brake line. Just toss that by the back. There's going to be another one there that does not have any rubber grommets on it, but it's pretty long. That's going to be for up here. Then you're going to have two brake lines that uh, will go to the calipers down below. One of them has that barrel connector on it. That's going to be for the left side. The one that does not, that's going to be for the right side. There's your three-way manifold. And in the kit, you should have a bunch of little aluminum washers. Take your brake line and feed it back down through where the original one went. Go ahead and connect it to your master cylinder. So we're going to take the banjo bolt and put a fresh washer on it. So make sure it, it is under, there's a little tab that's on the master cylinder here. Just make sure that the line is underneath that. So that way when you tighten it down, it, it kind of butts right up against that little metal tab. I'm just going to snug this up and then I'm going to torque it to 18 newton meters. That's that one. I'll go ahead and put this back in there. You roll this down and it will stop. It, it'll, it'll hit a little uh, area where it will just stop moving. That's where it needs to be. Fish your line in there. You can put all this back together if you really want to right now. On this one, I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this up and do all my bleeding and everything, and I'll do all that later. Snug that up. Make sure that the your, your throttle is nice and free moving. If it's not, you may want to spray a little uh, dry lube in here, a little silicone dry lube and it will loosen things up a little bit for you. This one's in great shape. Go ahead and put your covers back on. That way you don't lose any parts. Okay, this part's done. Now we're going to go back down below and work on the front calipers. Now this next part is for those of you who might already have Spiegler brake lines on here. So if they look like this, they might just be Spiegler brake lines. If they already have Spiegler brake lines on it, you're going to be able to skip ahead here. What you're going to do is take the line that you just installed and you're going to hook it right into the three-way manifold that will be right here at this point. You're just going to unbolt the top one and bolt this one in. Okay, that's that's going to be your next procedure. And then skip ahead to the rest. Or watch it and hang out and watch it done. And the rest of you guys, we're going to pull the, get the rag out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and cut all the zip ties off of the brake lines. Holding your ABS sensor wire in. Get that one out of the way. 
Another one up here. All right here in on this bike, it's kind of blocked by the by this thing. You're going to see a, a holder that's holding this brake line to there. Now there is a way to get get the brake line uh, to come loose from the back, but I just cut them and I just zip, put a zip tie in. There we go. That's loose. Now down here at the manifold, you're going to need a 10 millimeter for right here and an 11 millimeter to loosen up this one on the back. You'll need a 6 millimeter to come off right here. And don't forget your rag. Lay your rag, wrap it around down here at the on the caliper you know, to catch all the brake fluid that's going to come out that's stored in the line here that's going to come down. So I start at the top and loosen up the, the line here. Just crack that loose. Make sure you have a good quality or at least a brand new six millimeter before you start this. This is a snap-on one. Uh, they hold the the edges really well and if they even start to get worn out I can change them on the truck. But I would really recommend that you have decent quality tools because sometimes these things can get really stuck. They kind of get galvanized in there uh, and they will strip out pretty easy. So you don't you definitely don't want to do that otherwise you'll be in there drilling and oh that would be a nightmare. All right, remove the little uh, washers again. And I'm going to crack this one open right here, and this is going to cause it to drain out onto my rag. Now, I, I like to remove the tire. Uh, you don't necessarily have to if you got short enough tools, and, and you can get in underneath the fender if you really would rather not remove your tire. I like to remove the tire because uh, I'll inspect the bearings and everything and it just makes this job easier if the tire is removed and you just reinstall the calipers back into the spots on the forks. Pull those off again, just toss them in, in the bin. There's one underneath. We'll let that drain down. Take off this 10 millimeter here, or at least loosen it up a little bit. It does help to leave this in place. Don't you know? Uh, undo it from here because you have to deal with the 11 millimeter that's right behind it. The one that there's a little short hard line here that you got to take off. And if you hold on to the line here, you can usually get that opened pull that one off so there's a very small washer behind it set that down now you can remove this line entirely and discard it here in your kit you're going to have the three-way manifold again it can only really only go one way you got to have a line coming in a line going out to the to the right side and then this part goes over to the the other side so we're going to just kind of mock this up for right now. There we go. Just going to kind of temporarily put this up there. We're going to tighten everything up at once so we don't miss anything. You want to make sure that the top part of your line is on the outside of the frame. It's out here. Okay, don't, you don't need to have it through the middles or anything like that. I designed it so that it, it really mimics the original routing very closely. It'll go in between where they used to connect and the bolt that holds on the, the front frame. So I like to uh, kind of do you know everything at one time. So I'm, like right now I'm just routing all the brake lines. I like to route all my lines and then I'll tighten everything down at one time and then I'll go all at once. I'll, I'll do all of the zip tying into place. You can temporarily put this back in its, in its location here but that doesn't mean it's it's done. We'll, we'll zip tie everything up a little bit better later on. Now you're going to take this line here, take the banjo bolt, put a new washer on it. And you'll see it's it's going to be right behind the tab that's on the caliper here. There's a little tab. Again, it's so when you tighten it up, it butts up against that and can't go any further than it's in the right place. So this is really ready to tighten up 
but I'm going to go ahead and now do the other side of this. Over on this side, it's going to be really the same thing. So if you, you have a 14 millimeter grip here, and you've got your 11 millimeter here, and you have to pull this out. I'll show you that in just a second. You usually have one zip tie that's holding the ABS line onto the brake line to deal with or to remove. Don't forget your rag down here to catch any of the brake fluid that's going to come out. Ooh, I didn't like the way that felt. Definitely a good reason to have quality tools. Don't forget to pull these off. You'll probably have a leak if you don't. So the reason I, I take the bottom one off all the way is sometimes you can't really see or grab onto the the 14 millimeter hold area and you gotta pull the line down. Might have to get some lubricant on there, some uh, WD-40 or something. So again, you want to line this up so that it, it, it lines up correctly with that little stop. It's going to go in between the stop and the bleeder. I'm going to go ahead and torque everything down. So 18 newton meters is the answer for this. There's one. Over on this side I've got the 14 millimeter again holding it and you're just going to tighten this one down like the uh, Germans would say good and tight. I'm not going to torque this one. If you want to go through the hassle of torque in this one you go ahead. I just like to snug it down and that's that. So if if the you know the bolt part is on the top side if it fits underneath don't worry about it as long as it's in this holder that's all that really matters. We're going to zip tie this line back to the to the brake line when I get to that point but we're going to go over to the other side now and torque down the rest of those. And down here we don't have to worry about any of this. So you're going to have a banjo bolt left over, okay? If you'd like, just go ahead and uh, run it into one of the holes up here where the old uh, brake lines used to be. And, you know, I guess if, or throw it in your toolbox or whatever, you're really not going to need this system anymore, these lines, but if you don't know what else to do with it, or if you want to just keep the dirt out or something, go ahead and run it in there. Good little storage spot, I suppose. Also, if you had the other brake lines, you know, the and you don't know what to do with the lines, I would just recommend just removing them. But if you wanted to loop the line so that you know both of these are closed off, go ahead and do that. That's up to you. You don't have to do that. So let's get on with the back brake line. On the rear wheel circuit, we're gonna start right here at the master cylinder. So there is a little clip that's right here by the spring that pops out. Just get anything in there and just push against it and it'll pop out like that. And you remove this pin. That that will free up from the linkage. You got two five millimeter bolts holding this on. And take those out. It's going to be the same on all years. And just remove this like that. Oh, I forgot, you got one zip tie right here. Cut that out of the way. Now this is free and can just be set up pretty much anywhere. You just usually set it up on the, on the bike. So now what you do is you take a screwdriver and run it in just so that just stays like that in this hole. That way you can uh, torque on this 14 millimeter bolt that's right up here. Up above it, right here, is where it connects. So, 
Again, you want to have good quality tools here. Six millimeter, I use a long one. Make sure it's in there good. I'm going to just hang my wrench on there. I need to get a 15 millimeter against it. Okay, there's, you'll see on the back side of this, it's a lot easier without the shock, but I'm not removing the shock for this job. Take a, a towel or some other kind of insulating material and lay it on top of your battery and get it get it around the positive terminal to make sure that you don't you know create a, a bunch of sparks when you go down in here but you can get in this thing get the 15 millimeter on that thing okay one more thing before you forget, just forgot to do it but it didn't empty this out all the way. Before you uh, crack that loose, go ahead and put a clamp on your the, the hose that's coming out of the little reservoir that's over here. Your, your hose might look a little bit different than this. It might be uh, the, the two-sided reservoir. This is just the single one. But you want to clamp off those lines so that the reservoir doesn't just continue to drain out here at this part. So now, with that clamped off, you can go ahead and remove this bolt. You're not going to reuse this again for this particular job. You're not going to have to put anything else in this spot. So let's pull that banjo bolt out. One on the master cylinder here for the rear. Have something underneath because it will drip a little bit. Then just remove this hose. Throw it away. Now again, with the banjo bolt, you can put that right back into the, the hole that's above this spot. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, in case you don't want to lose it or whatever, use it for something else. Now we're going to go ahead and remove this line. Taking clip off all of your zip ties, holding the ABS wire on. We'll get our little container here to catch the brake fluid that's inevitable that will come out of that spot. Go ahead and pull them out of the little mooring clips, the little holding clips. And go ahead and remove that brake line just like we've removed all of the other lines up to this point. Now this, this line may want to drain quite a while okay if it does it this on this particular install just go ahead and let it drain the other thing you can do if you don't want it to sit there and drain for a long time is you can put a clamp on the drain hose that comes off of the ABS pump the overfill hose when you put a clamp on this it, it will create a suction you know it will just hold there it won't be able to just continually just drain out it still will drain a little bit. Anyways, let's pull this line off of here. All right, take a pliers. It can be a channel lock or it doesn't have to be one of these. Whatever. You just want to be able to hold this thing while you crank on it because it, as we've discovered, they can be very, very tight. This one I'm going to just go ahead and put the I'm put the banjo bolt back in here and then remove the line and throw it away. Now you got your last line here with the uh, two rubber grommets on it. These will move, so if you need to adjust where they're at, they just slide along. And the way you install this. You start right here, and what I do is I, I take this end of it, so the, the severely bent end, the 90 degree end, and I feed it down through there. 
pull it out and then you can slide it over this way okay all right and the angle that this line goes get this out of the way the angle that this line goes is it's not straight towards the transmission and it's not angled like this it's at about I don't know but let's just say it's about a 30 degree angle you want it to be just off angle if it gets to a 45 that's okay too but I like to put it pretty much right back in the same angle that it used to be and I'm just gonna snug it up right now in case I have to move it okay the rest of this line now you can take and go behind the frame rails and drag it over to where it will hook up to the caliper we're going to zip tie all this area in so that way it doesn't uh, you know get in the way of the wheel or anything or create a problem pull your wire out in front or at least this way just so you you know it's just a little bit easier to manage and then we're going to go ahead and install this line under the caliper again you got that little bump stop on there so you know where it goes torque this down to 18 newton meters as well as the one in the front so to keep this in place to keep this thing where it's supposed to go the, the correct angle put your wrench on there and then put a screwdriver in behind it and just kind of wedge against that and you'll be able to hold it right where it needs to stay there we go now at this point we can go ahead and reinstall the footrest and this whole area can be reinstalled you're gonna need the footrest back in place so you can bleed it if you want to torque these down now you can 21 newton meters all right down below here now we're gonna start I like to start in the back and move my way forward so put the little uh, grommets where they're supposed to go and press it in to the holder and we're gonna take the ABS line and we'll start zip tying here one down low and then just just follow the the line up a little bit take a zip tie and go around where the old brake line used to mount to and put a couple of them in here you don't want it to get away from this spot this is what's going to keep it out of the tire so now you, you see it's it the line pretty much follows where the old line used to go now this one so you you, you know you, you still have a little bit of slack here so if you need to feed you know more back here if you feel like it's not gonna you know be loose enough or whatever it, it's it has like just a little bit of extra slack and you're gonna zip tie this just out of the way you're gonna get it you know so it doesn't get caught up in the spring for any reason I like to go right through this bolt hole that's right here and zip it there that way it'll keep it out of the spring and then just tie it to whatever you want down here you can uh, you know you can go against the frame rail or you can go against the uh, the old hard line that is up in there you just don't want the brake line to get loose and start flopping around for any reason that's it okay so these are done this is just going to hang like that it's it's not going to get in the way of anything it's not going to interfere with anything it's going to be just fine if it's a little tighter through there don't worry about it just just get it zipped in there if you got to make adjustments you can always do that later but for right now this looks really good Next, I'm going to move right up to the front and zip tie all of those lines up again. So I'll put a zip tie in here at the very bottom. You know, zip tie one in the middle, 
And then if you use the 8 inch zip ties or longer, you can go around the frame rail and zip tie the line right to the rail. Now you got one zip tie left that is going to go on the ABS line on the other brake line. So let's bleed these brakes out. This is going to be a very, very traditional brake bleed now. You're going to fill up the reservoir at the top, make sure that there's no air in there, and then start bleeding out to the circuits. Uh, you're going to, same thing with the rear. So we'll, we'll go through that real quick. All right, bleeding out the front brakes here. Very, very important that you do this. So when you, you know, go ahead and fill this thing up. This is extremely important. You'd sit there and move this in and out <clears throat> just a little bit. And I don't, I don't know if you can see inside the reservoir or not, but there's bubbles that are coming up right here. And what that's doing is it's filling up the the piston area of this master cylinder. And if you don't do this, you will never get these brakes bled correctly. So make sure you do this. So that didn't take very long at all. But uh, again, that's an extremely important part. If you guys are having trouble with your brakes, you know, not bleeding out correctly, almost 10 out of 10 times that will be the problem. There's a little bit of air trapped in there, and you just got to work it out. Okay, these are either going to be uh, an 8 millimeter, a 10 millimeter, or an 11 millimeter. Now that it's essentially just an open tube, you can either gravity bleed it or pump the brakes, close it, open it. You've done that kind of thing before on cars or maybe other motorcycles. It's really just that easy on this now. Again, it's very important that you keep the paint covered and the windshield covered. Another very important thing is either do this with the wheel on so that your brake rotors are there, or in this case, I put some wood blocks inside of between the brake pads so that the pads don't, you know, expand out and wind up you know causing some damage on the calipers having the wheel off of there also makes it easier to bleed the other side of this I'm going to remove the brown fluid that's or old fluid in this case out of that little reservoir so I've drained out all of the brake fluid out of here go ahead and refill that take off my clamp and I'm going to open up the bottom down here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that gravity bleed a little bit and then I'm going to uh, pump the brakes just like I did up on the top. It's just going to be the same kind of thing. Okay, you get the idea. Uh, don't forget to also, on the rear circuit here, there is another nipple bleeder that is behind the brake caliper on the other side of the brake caliper. Make sure you bleed that one too so you get the other side cleared out as well. But this, is about, this part's about done. We're going to move on to the next part here. The next part is going to involve removing the relay out of here. So the th this applies to all models, whether you're at the 02 or all the way up to 09. So move these lines out of the way, and we're going to just pull this cover off. Um, you remove these screws, so this one, this one, this one, that one. If there is one here, which that one's missing for some reason, you pull that screw out, and then th that should be enough but let's just pull these out. All right, once that's open, pull this out. You're going to see uh, the tray right here on the top with all the relays in it. You just pull it forward, and it'll drop away, and it's this blue one at the back. It's going to be the same on all the years, that blue one. can't really screw it up. Well, you could if you pull the black one instead then just something else won't work. So we're just going to rip that out or tear the cap off of it, I guess. We're just going to discard that or put it in your box of parts. Save it for another project. And then go ahead and slide that tray back in there and pop the screws back in. 
That's all you need to do there. Okay, now for the most difficult part of this job, and that is going to be taking care of the ABS unit. So what we have to do is this electronics box that's at the very back here, the one with the big connector on it, there is a bunch of wire connections that go to the pump. Those have to be disconnected. On this particular model, the late model stuff, everything from about uh, 2003, 4, something like that up, this box is on the side of the unit and what's right in the way well this uh, this block right here this is the reverse module this wouldn't be any fun to get out either but I guess on the plus side we're gonna remove this altogether and it's gonna be some weight savings first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drain if you haven't already drained out these two reservoirs okay these need to be empty the reason they need to be empty is it just makes a big mess when you pull the thing out it's gonna come out in this direction here and it's these things will tip these are all gonna be open all these hardline ports are gonna be open and it just makes a tremendous mess so I'm gonna go ahead and empty these out uh, this is a uh, uh, an 8 millimeter hex that's in these reservoirs and I'm also just going to go ahead and remove entirely the uh, the drain hose here. Okay, I don't need this drain hose anymore, so this is just going to come right out of the bike, and we're going to get rid of it, or just store it in a box. Okay, if you want to hold on to the stuff, that's up to you. Now this this rear reservoir here, this is the rear one. You know it's the rear because it's the smaller one. The big one is the uh, the front. That is probably already empty from just draining it out, but I'm going to check it. So what I'm doing right now is taking a needle nose pliers and going down inside here. You're going to see a little filter element right there. Okay, pull those out. All right, like I said, this one should be pretty empty. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing for the front circuit or reservoir. Look at how dark that stuff was. No wonder it went bad. What if we want to have this rebuilt at a later time? Well, you can certainly do that. You have to remove the pump to have it rebuilt anyway. So remove the pump. The only difference is you would have to uh, send in this electronic box with it so that when they rebuild it, they can have a way to test it. So you're still able to do that. All this stuff is reversible. So now we're going to disconnect the level indicators that are on here. There's just a little push tab and then pull up on the on the wire there we go I'm gonna kick those out of the way the other things you should do is these zip ties that are on like the O2 sensor and that kind of thing any wires that are in the way clip the zip ties and get them out of the way because you need all the room that you can get in here trust me okay what I do is I take the wires and I, I put them over the top here and I shove the the wire loom out of the way as much as I can so I have as much room as possible to get after things here those are disconnected now we need to disconnect some hard lines here you got this this hard line here and uh, this one right here so we're gonna start here what you do is these little rubber boots that are on these pull these back and you're gonna see just a little clip right there you can either get a pliers or a screwdriver behind them and pull them out of there so pull the clip out looks like that pull those clips out set them in your tree And then these, now this is going to drip because there's still brake fluid in here from the original brake system. We can pull that line out of there. Let's see, it's leaking out all over. Ooh, that stuff's nasty. Don't be afraid about bending these things out of the way, okay? If, if you got to bend them, they'll bend back if you need to. You need to put them back. Now this block right here 
has to come off. There's a there's a screw right here. It's uh, you can use a T25. It's a, I think it's a T27, but it's not on there real tight. So if you all you got is a T25, just do that. I'll pull that out. Now this is loose. It can get out of the way. This one you don't really need to uh, disconnect. You can just kind of let it hang or swing. It you might need to disconnect it if it, this is getting in the way, but I think I can probably leave it there. Go ahead and disconnect this screw while you've got the your T25 bit or T27. This is one of two spots that are that's holding in the ABS pump. Now we need to remove the other hard lines that are holding this thing down. So we're going to pull up the the rubber boots here. Okay, two more things. So you can't really see it on camera, but right down here, straight down, you're going to see a hex bolt. It's a five millimeter hex bolt. Remove that hex bolt. That one is holding on the other spot, the front side of the ABS holder. So there's this uh, this one tab right here. This is definitely going to get in the way. So you're going to have to kind of bend that around a little bit to, to get that out of the way properly. There we go. Let's bring it up to the top. There we go. I did not need that. So now it's loose. And you just got to you gotta wiggle it out of here. Try to keep your your uh, brake lines out of the way. If you gotta bend them, don't worry. Really, just get them out of the way. You don't want anything hanging up and causing you not to be able to get this stupid thing out of here. See, it's a piece of cake. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh, you see how easy that was? Now, we need to take off this electronics box. These are definitely specialty tools here. You need five pointed star sockets for this. Make sure you have five pointed star sockets. Don't just drill them out. Don't try to use a six point. It's not going to work. Five pointed star sockets. I do have some of those on my Amazon page listed down in the description below. They are not a lot of money. Uh, just get yourself a set and that way you know you've got the correct one. But I'm going to go ahead and the size you need is a TS20. TS20. Now the late model ones, excuse me, the early model ones take a three I don't know what it's called. It's like a three-way security bit. I, you'll see when you get it off what you need. So just remove these four screws. Okay. So pull that apart. You're going to see inside of here what you got here is you got these wired connections, okay? What you do, just get a, a needle nose pliers and pull off this connection. So you got this one here goes to the pump. Just pull it straight out. It'll disconnect. And then there's one above it. Let's see where it connects. Just grab onto the connector and pull it out. You got the same thing on this side there's one and here's the other the last thing you have hopefully you guys can see this okay you got two ribbon connectors 
all you do is you grab onto the wires and pull them straight out away that's it just pull these ribbon connectors away now this whole electronics box is disconnected and it's ready to go back in this part is so this part of the bike th this part is what controls your uh, brake lights it controls your speedometer uh, different functions within the dash y you got to have this in the bike this part here this heavy uh, boat anchor yeah you can leave this out if you have taken this out unless you really want to drive around with it I think you got a nice uh, location here to maybe put a quart of oil or something if you wanted to but go ahead and store that in a box or something I'm gonna kinda bend these back into place if you really wanted to you could put you know plugs or something on the ends of these I'm not gonna do that I don't think this guy's gonna ever put this thing back in and I don't think he would and even if it is this area is really quite protected and uh, you, you know you don't have to worry too much about it one thing we will worry about though is this thing here we want to seal this off so you can either use uh, just some shipping tape and you know kind of cocoon this thing up or if you've got some of that stretchy plastic wrap you can do that you can also put this into a bag and and tape it up so it you know it, it stays closed uh, you just don't want like a gross amount of water getting onto it I suppose if it got a little splash on it it's probably not going to hurt much because it's all kind of encased in uh, resin down below on that motherboard but we want to go ahead and, and put some kind of cover on this covering all right, that's pretty good that'll keep the majority of water out of it and then we're gonna plug this thing back in and you just set it in there push down just a little bit and then close this and it will seat itself you can just let that sit in there now make sure to test your brake lights okay turn your key on check your brake lights if they're not working uh, I might have to do something else to uh, get get it working again I've, I've had them where they weren't working the other thing you might want to check too if your brake lights aren't working uh, believe it or not is that is your fuses and uh, your relay or uh, your alarm it, it's it's all tied together it's just a nightmare so that's it on how to remove fully remove the ABS system a complete bypass everything should work now your brake light should work your speedometer should work your brakes are going to work just like conventional brakes just keep in mind you will no longer have ABS so don't blame me if you wind up skidding um, it, it, you know if you use one of these kits they, these are let's say they're quote for off-road use only yeah that's what the package would say when when you get that and you take your responsibility into your own hands okay I'm I'm just showing you how I'm just showing you how if, if you want to do this to your bike that's on you if you want one of these kits again just contact me through my website kirksmotorrod.com and we will discuss the exactly what you need I'll let you know what the price is and uh, we'll get it out to you I believe that shipping to the UK and such uh, is pretty much non-existent right now as of, as of the time that I'm making this video but by all means reach out and I'll, I'll look into it and and see if it's worth uh, you know me shipping you a kit and we'll, we'll go from there but the US yeah we will definitely can get you uh, fixed up and get you back on the road so thanks so much for watching if you appreciate these videos and you know you want to support the video work uh, there's other means to do that right down below as well whether it's through the patreon page or through the purchasing of my uh, LT poster or uh, some t-shirts obviously I'm not wearing one right now but anyway guys thanks so much for watching I hope this video has helped you out if you got some questions either put them in the comments below or send me one off of my page uh, over at kirksmotorrod.com and until the next one I will see you later